Greetings to you. This Sunday, our Bible study, God speaks to us through the Gospel of Luke in chapter 15. The verses are 20 through 32. Bathe yourself in prayer as you prepare to hear God. Prepare to hear God. What is our Father saying to us? In my heart, this is what I hear my Father sharing from His Word. Read and study the entire chapter 15 of Luke. You will discover that there is a context that is significant for the parable of the prodigal son. For there are three parables that are given in this chapter. And in the first two verses of chapter 15, there is a listing of those people who first heard these parables. Some were tax gatherers, publicans, who collected Roman taxes for personal gain, for personal profit, profit, there were those who were described simply as sinners, those not living according to God's instructions, His laws. There were Pharisees who were religious leaders. There were scribes who were teachers of the law, God's instructions. A great variety of people listened to the parable of the prodigal son. These three parables, one is the lost sheep, then is given the lost coin, and then in greater detail, the lost son, the prodigal son, in verses 11 through 32. I want us to note first, there are two decisions that the prodigal son made. Those decisions are found in verses 11 and 12, and then the second one in verses 18 through 19. But also it's important to note the situation that the prodigal son was in, and that led to both decisions. The first decision, the prodigal son wanted his share of what he considered to be his share of the family estate, of his father's uh, money, so to speak. He wanted money so that he could leave home and live as he desired, so that he could be his own man on his own. The second decision comes in verses 13 and 14, verses 16 and 17, after he has spent all the money his dad gave him, spent all the inheritance that he was to receive according to the Jewish custom. He had found himself as a result of his loose living, his, his riotous living, he had spent all the money and he was in need, in great need. No one would give him anything even to eat. He came to his senses. He came to himself. Or as one has written, he began to see things as they really were. Well, he was starving to death, is another way of describing it. He was in deep trouble. In verses 18 and 19, he, had, having come to himself, seeing the conditions in which he 
now was not only living, but what he, the results were of his first decision to live as he wanted to live. He acknowledged to himself, I have sinned. I am no longer worthy. He made the hard decision, used the hard word to say, the word sin. It is difficult for us as human beings who have not experienced the forgiveness of God to admit that we are sinners, that we have sinned. But the prodigal son said to himself the hard word, sin and he confessed he saw his own pitiful plight and was humble now we come to the core passage for today's bible study and it is verses 20 through 32 the question is when the prodigal son came home. What happened when he arrived at home? He experienced a compassionate father. He experienced the compassionate father whom he had left, gone into a far country and squandered all the inheritance that his dad had given him. But his father was a compassionate father. In verses 20 through 32, note the actions of the father that show his heart of compassion for his prodigal son, but also for his elder son. His compassion for his prodigal son is described in verse 20 and then in verses 22 through 24. Verse 20 gives us a description of the father as a long way off his father saw him. It is as though the father was waiting and hoping and looking down the country lane of the estate or some image that would be an indication that his wayward, immoral, sinful son has come home. There was the day when the father saw an image and he ran and he embraced his prodigal son and the verb form that is there he kissed him means that he kissed him again and again and again. Oh, his compassion was overwhelmed with his joy. He gave uh, instructions to his servants to prepare for a great feast. And he filled, he had, uh, he gave instructions to kill the fatted calf, which was always reserved for a special occasion. This would be a celebration of rejoicing. And the father said to the servants, he was dead, he was lost, he has been found. You can almost feel the joy, the compassion that he expressed for his prodigal son. When we turn to the elder son who comes in from the field as it were from his day of work and hears all the noise of celebration that is being prepared and taking place. His elder son reacted with anger and the father received word that the elder son was there. 
and the father left the celebration with his prodigal son who had now come home after all this time from his loose living. He came out of the celebration and the father began to entreat, to beg, to request his elder son to come in and join in the festival of celebration that his son who was lost and has now come home and been found. After his elder son's angry, emotional explosion toward his father, his father expressed his heart's compassion for his elder son. He said to his son, my child, and he ate, and my father, his father, expressed his compassion. You have always been with me. Think about it. This one who had stayed home all those years while the younger son was doing his own thing, this son who had stayed home, been faithful to his dad and to his responsibilities, his father says to him, my child, you have always been with me. Oh, there's no greater blessing than to be, real, be one who has come to realize in his own heart that God is with us. And as a result, we are always with our Father who is in heaven. You have always been with me. The central teaching of Jesus to every person, both historically, those who heard this parable for the first time and for now, in this teaching of Jesus, I hear God saying, for those who were the first hearers of the parable, what I hear God saying through his word is that the Father represents God. The sinning son represents the tax collectors and the sinners who first heard it. They are given in verse 1 of the chapter. The elder son is like the grumbling Pharisees of verse 2. But the central teaching of Jesus is our Father who is in heaven has a compassionate heart for sinners, whomever they are, whomever they are, whatever they have done. I hear God saying also, this parable includes a warning against the unbrotherly attitude that exists so greatly in our country right now. But it assures us of God's compassion for us sinners and tells us that only when we sinners return to the Father's house do we really experience the joy of being a child of God. Two matters for you to consider. In the first two parables, a search was made for the sheep and the corn which were lost. The sheep and the corn are material things. In contrast to the parable of the prodigal son, the third parable of the chapter, the person is a, who came home, the prodigal son, 
is a human person. The rejoicing over the sheep and the corn were a celebration of joy for things that had been lost. But in the third parable, there is great rejoicing for a human being who was lost and has come home to the Father. No one searched for the lost son. Interesting. There were those who searched for the corn and the sheep. But there is no indication in the parable that anyone searched for the lost prodigal son. But the compassionate father saw him while he was still a long way off from home, like our Heavenly Father sees us when we come to ourselves and return to our Father. What I hear God saying to me through this parable is this. Our Father who is in heaven has a heart filled with compassion toward me. Regardless of however I have sinned, wherever I have gone astray, and is longing for me to come to myself and return home. I hear God speaking more in my heart where he dwells than to my mind. I hear God saying, Be whom you were created to be. Be our Father's Son, for you were created in the image of God, our compassionate Father. What do you, Father or Mother, say to your son or daughter when they call from a long ways off and ask, can the prodigal son come home? What do you say when your son calls and asks you, Father, Mother, can your prodigal son come home? I hear my compassionate Heavenly Father, whose goodness, whose love and forgiveness whose care, joy, compassion have no limits at all, no limits at all, saying to me, go and be likewise. Be the same. Be compassionate as our Father is compassionate.